also the elderly behave differently than uh, than everybody else does or that other adults do. And so what this will hopefully do is provide you with some, you know, what are the exceptions rather than, and there will be some generalities. I'm sure, okay, this is how burn wound healing happens. This is, <laughs> this is what we do to uh, uh, maximize that or to uh, do that. The other thing is that, uh, but in kids, how at the, out, at the margin is a better term for any of y'all who have any economics training at all, uh, is that the margin is where the difference is made. And uh, that's where kids are going to be act differently. They heal faster, for instance than adults do. However, they also scar more, okay, because that's just part of the deal. So their, their system's all ready to go. When you get old like me, you just don't go as fast. <laughs> and, uh, and we're all going to get that opportunity, it's, you know, hopefully, <laughs> to, uh, to, to know about what aging does. Kids are, are you know, uh, a difference there. The other thing is that uh, uh, with children, it's you know you're, they grow. You got to consider that. Whereas adults, hopefully, we don't grow. <laughs> uh, but the uh, uh, so there's that too, and then there's also the family interactions that are very very important. And uh, kids are from a guy who does all of it. Kids are easier to do burns than than adults because you don't have as many those kind of things they actually do heal uh, and some of those other kind of things and that's what I think this course is going to kind of teach you about with that but that with that comes things like crying anxiety you know, some of these other things that adults don't do as much they do but not as much as kids do because they just don't know yet right and uh, and so how do we how do we maximize their outcomes and minimize their suffering is what we're what we're trying to do uh, with burn care in a nutshell. So I go all over the world telling people in burn care uh, what we ought to be striving for is three things. And the first one is no deaths, zero, none. It's not okay. Okay, and if you don't try, you won't get there. And that's why. I often rankle with the uh, palliative care people is that, hey, death is not a good thing. Sometimes it's unavoidable, okay, but if it's avoidable at all, you ought to be striving for that, uh, number one. Number two, no scar, none. So, oh yeah, but scar to happen. No, what we ought to be doing is trying to minimize that at the very least, and at the very most, is to eliminate it for, at all. And see if we can get there. And then the third one is no pain. None. Okay. Again, we don't. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And pain, unfortunately, probably is part of the healing process. Uh, <laughs> and so it's gonna. It's hard to get that all the way there. But that's our goal. Is those three things. Uh, in the end. Are we going to get there? No, but if we don't try to get there, we never will. And so uh, there's doing that. So when you guys come in, you'll be new to the game, but you'll have experiences that everybody else may or may not have. And what I try to, to you know, make sure that everybody understands, hey, we're listening. If you have an idea, let us know. And you know, when we're making rounds in the morning, I think it's very important nursing has to be there. Because uh, you guys, so I, I, you know, Clayton's heard this thing say this many times, is we're just doing drive dives a couple times a day, okay? <laughs> you guys are there all the time. And what we, and you have, you'll, you'll see things that are not on the numbers, things that are not on it. It's like, yeah, this kid, nah, nah, nah. We want to hear about that. The medical providers will want to hear that. So, you know, what is our job to do as medical, as doctors, is to diagnose and treat. To diagnose and prescribe treatment. We, we may not actually get the treatment, and maybe you guys are doing that. What we do is pr prescribe that, and that's our responsibility. We are responsible for making diagnoses and prescribing treatment. Everybody else, we want we want input from everybody on that. But at the end of the day, the buck does stop with the doctors. Okay, for.
for that stuff. However, we need input everyone to make that happen and then when we prescribe treatment you guys are generally the ones who actually do it yeah, we do we go to the operating room and do that there's nurses that help us there too and, and then on the floor there's nurses that actually carry out most of that and then in the clinic or the outpatient setting same thing and so we work together as a team and uh, the way it's, it, things are set up so uh, what I do try to, to make sure that everybody understands that nursing, there's a role, and, and everybody has a role, and, it's, and we all need to treat each other with respect and listen. Why? So that kid can benefit. Okay, so we want to set up systems, and I'm not about systems, I'm about taking care of that child. Now our system should be set up to where we're maximizing that, but occasionally you're going to have outlier conditions, you're going to have margin. And that's what would, I really depend on. Me personally, I really depend on you guys and say, hey, this one ain't going right. And then we got to put that in balance with what we know about biology and, and psychology and some of these other things and strive to get the best outcome for that child. And you guys play a key role, if not the most important role in that when it comes down to it. So. There you go. Thank you, Dr. Wolf. Yes, Wolfe. sir. As you mentioned, we have to advocate for our patients, keep those communication lines open. We're all in the same mission, the same goals at the end of the day. Yeah.